real lives and real testimonies to bring inspiration and hope to the world. There's so much more to the Christian life than just being married. There's not an official age when I decided to be a virgin. We're talking about biblical manhood plus fighting temptation. Welcome to Crystal's Corner. Hey guys, welcome back to Crystal's Corner. I'm your host, Crystal TV, and today we have Temi Coker on the show. <laughs> so excited because Temi is a creative genius. I, I think he is because you guys need to see his work on his Instagram and just what he does as a creative. So he is currently doing his residency with Adobe, which is super cool. I mean, it was like one in how many people get those a uh, year? Yeah, so it was 1,500 and he picked seven. That is crazy. Okay, so you know he has to be a creative genius to be picked by Adobe to collaborate with or to just work with period. So that's pretty awesome. Thank you. And alongside doing that, you're also a photographer. You also do a lot of digital art, which is pretty fascinating as well. Yeah. And that's kind of what puts you on their map and their radar. Yeah, I yeah. believe so. Hmm, that's really cool. So tell us more about just your background with art and photography, creating as a creator. How, how has that been? Yeah, so I, um, I always knew I was kind of like creative since I was young. Uh, I've been playing keys since I was 10. And so that's kind of how the whole creativity stuff started. I remember making like a fake camera when I was young and taking a picture of somebody. But the way I made it, I already drew their picture. And so I put it in the paper. And when I took the picture, the paper flew out. Right. So it was just like back then my creativity was like growing. Um, and then I came to America, uh, went to college and studied digital media. And then from there, um, I just fell more and more in love with photography and mm -hmm. graphic design. And yeah, and that's kind of what got me to where I am today, just uh, tapping into the different creative fields. And now I feel like photography and design are my strongest uh, creativity gifts, I would say. And I think that's pretty great because as a creative, it's really hard to hone your gifts and just figure out, okay, what do I want to focus on? What is my niche? Yeah, yeah. And I think you pretty much found that, which is really cool because I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do is to find your niche as a creative. Like, what do I want to put my all in all in? Right. And I think that seeing the fruits of what that's done in your life, it's pretty great to see how that's really pushed you where you are. Um, All right, so let's talk more about your creative residency with Adobe. Let's talk about that journey. Where did it start? Yeah, so um, I started um, doing design and photography in college. Mm -hmm. Photography started um, in 2011. Got my first camera and started taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And then I started to notice I was very observant and uh, I was just looking at things and colors and textures mm -hmm. and compositions. And I was like, man, I'll see some designs and acts like, dang, how did they make that? Mm -hmm. So some people would not answer me, so what I would do is just go to YouTube and try to find right. some stuff. And that's when I started getting into like Illustrator and design, Photoshop, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I had design classes in college for my major, and it was fun, but I think I learned more when I was outside the classroom. Mm -hmm. So let's say in the classroom, we had a project to do a campaign. Uh, I'd make a poster for it. What I would do is I'll make it in the class, but then I'll go back home and try to make my own up make up my own campaign. Mm -hmm. And so when I graduated, I worked at a, a church as a graphic designer for a couple of months, and then I felt like I needed to go to teaching. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to teach the younger generation that it's, it, it is possible to be a creative right. um, and do that full time. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, I didn't have anyone tell me that, so I yeah. never really saw it. And especially being Nigerian. Yeah, especially being Nigerian, you don't see that often. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's a wave now that's coming that's really inspiring to see that people are taking those risks more. Right. Um, of course, but those risks come consequences. I've mm -hmm. had people try to do the same thing I did, and then they say like, "Oh, my mom, stop talking to me," oh. and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, yeah. You know, it comes with that." Mm -hmm. Like, um, I know my parents were not happy at first. Mm -hmm. um, I had to almost show them. Right. that this is something that I was serious about yeah. and that it is something that was bringing money in. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I went back to teaching, taught for three years, so 2015 to 2018. 2016, I started the Poster Day Project mm -hmm. just to show my students, I mean, just for myself, to get right. better in design. Because from 2014 to 2016, I wasn't doing as much design. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of photography. Which is fine, mm -hmm. but I wanted to get better in design because I've always had this idea of trying to be a jack of all trades. Right. Or at least have three skills, photography, music, and design um, under my belt. 
there's something that I can do to bring in like multiple streams of income. Right, yeah. So I showed my students how to do all these things and how, how I made my posters mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I made tutorials for people on um, Instagram and YouTube. And yeah, and I just started that. And uh, the Adobe Creative Residency uh, had already started. Mm -hmm. And I saw that one of the friends I used to work with when I graduated college at the church I was working at, she was a resident. Oh, wow. And I got to keep up with her and see how she grew. Mm -hmm. um, and then another friend of mine did his uh, 2017 to 2018. And it was just awesome seeing him doing that as well. And so he told me to apply, but my other friends told me to apply. I was like, I don't know if I should. I feel like I had this imposter syndrome. Like I'm not that good yet. I know some people that are making posters better than I am. Um, what makes me so special, you know? And so uh, my wife was like, just apply, you have nothing to lose. If you don't get it, you can still teach. If you get it, I mean, if, yeah, yeah, if you get it, you don't teach. Mm -hmm. You, you get it. Exactly. Oh, wow. And so um, I applied and pressed submit two hours before the deadline. Wow. Right? You got it. And then I got it. You got to go on. I know. You God is to, good. You got to go on. Wow, that's so it's awesome. like there was a couple of steps. Like I had some, I had to do a phone interview, right. I had to repitch my idea, oh, wow. and they gave me like two days. So wow. I was teaching in class, and I'm like, like yeah, typing while the kids are working. Yeah, wow. Um, trying to come up with my proposal, and so mm -hmm. I sent it to them. Then I got a later interview to fly out. It was just a god thing. And what would you say would be the hardest part about your journey, like Ooh. through and through? Competition. Competition. Always com uh, comparing. Yeah, competition and comparing, mm -hmm. comparison. Mm -hmm. I always keep comparing myself to other people who have been in the photography or design game for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just get discouraged and be like, man, I should know how to do that. I should mm -hmm. know how to do more. Um, but I realized, you know, that I am where God wants me to be. Right. And um, all, the, all the things I did leading up to where I am today was like, because God allowed it. Right. And so I need to understand that I am where God wants me to be right now and just keep working hard, you mm -hmm. know, and um, just trying to grow in different ways. Pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I think it's always um, great just to also, like you said, knowing that God has placed you where you are. Right. It's always great to have that confidence in that because we always lose confidence in ourselves as human mm -hmm. beings. We always lose confidence in our ability to actually be in a position um, and thrive there. Right. But knowing that, man, God has put me here. Why shouldn't I thrive here? Why can't I thrive here? Right. Is really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, just as a creator myself, I think it's always hard, like you said, com comparison and competition. Mm -hmm. um, find that balance between not allowing the competition to distract you, but mm -hmm. also allowing the competition to keep you motivated to do better, to, to yeah, grow. Sure. Almost in a sense like, like com uh, accountability, in a yeah. sense, if that makes sense. Like, okay. Indirect accountability. Indirect accountability right. that can't become toxic if, if you're so focused on the competition, you're busy, you know, missing out on what you could be doing yourself. Yeah. Um, so I think that's pretty, pretty awesome that you were able to kind of push through and see where you are now, you mm -hmm. know? Um, had you given up because of that competition, you may not have felt confident enough to apply for the residency. You may not have felt confident to continue to make your posters, right. even though you were still learning, it's still a process. So Definitely. I think that's pretty amazing. Um, you're also a Christian. How has your faith inspired um, this whole journey? Oh man, it's uh, it's been amazing because I, I think I went to college to study biomedical engineering. Wow, yeah. Um, and it was kind of like, I went to study music, my parents said no. You so, must be a doctor! Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> doctor! <laughs> so I picked biomedical engineering. I didn't want to, mm -hmm. but my parents had that, I guess. Yeah. Um, and what I did was, um, I did that for like a year and a half. And I remember one night I was crying because I was just overwhelmed and I wasn't doing well in science classes. Mm -hmm. My GPA was about to fall and I was like, no, this, what am I doing? And it's like I knew what God was calling me to, but I was scared. And so I think that that night I made that decision to switch my major, mm -hmm. um, to follow what God had for me. And I think that was the first step to um, me just being obedient and um, listening to God and following what He wants me to do. And I think that's kind of what got me, because people called me and told me like, it's not God's will for you to switch your major and all of this stuff. And um, if I didn't have my, uh, strong faith in that, in, that, in that time, I probably would have like 
said, oh, you know what, I'm just going to stick with my American engineering. Um, and so, yeah, and I, I didn't know where I would be. Like, I didn't think I would be here today. I was just, I just knew that I didn't want to live a life um, for other people. Yeah. I wanted to live the life that God had for me. Yeah, that's good. And sometimes that requires that uh, it requires you to make some people mad, mm -hmm. you know. And to me, that's fine as long as God is happy. That's all right. that really matters. Yeah. Um. And so that's yeah. That's kind of like how things started for me. And um, time and time again, God mm -hmm. just showed that He was just faithful. To yeah. Um. And I was just obedient um, to the opportunities that came my way and the gifts that God has given me. And I was, I, I think, like, what I tell people is, like, just be faithful with your gift and let God do the rest, yeah. right? And the rest doesn't mean, like, oh, God is going to give you $3 million mm -hmm. or $3 million gig or whatever. It just means that you be more, you feel more fulfilled. Like, mm -hmm. for me, Adobe is amazing. I love the opportunity and I love that they've allowed me to be able to um, use my desire to teach other people mm -hmm. um, during the residency. Cause that's where I get my joy from, mm -hmm. right? So as much as I make my posters and stuff like that, I find joy in helping other people learn um, their skills mm -hmm. better and um, allow them to like make stuff for themselves. Yeah. You know, because I think as a creative, that should be our job. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't like hiding my process. I like showing it. Right. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, no one can create what I create. Exactly. Because they're not me. That confidence that you have in your your craft, though, right? Which is yeah, which is unique. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. it's a confidence that you know I felt like I had I I had to get from all the stuff I've gone through. Right. Right. Because I I had like low days mm -hmm. and I had some high days, yeah. and so it's just knowing that God has given me this gift of teaching and this gift of creativity, and now my goal is. How can I use the gift God has given me to serve yeah. others, right? right? And um, at the end of the day, I just want, like, if I pass away, I want people to know that Tammy Coker served people with the, his God-given talents. Right. Right. That's it. That's it. Like, That's it. Not that Tammy Coker worked with Nike or right. Adobe. Or yeah. Adobe. It's like, for me, the biggest thing is Tammy um, used his gift well. He was obedient and he served mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. That brings me joy knowing that that's, yeah. what, that's what's going to happen. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think um, there are so many young Christian creatives out there who are just looking for examples, looking for people who are living their lives um, on purpose, with purpose, um, as a creative. And I think yeah. that this is so helpful for them. Um, what's one word you would give to them that could encourage them or motivate them to just stay focused on what God has called them to do as a creative? What's one word you would think Ooh. that you could think of? I would say... Um, consistency. I think consistency brings growth. I think we get very comfortable where we're at. Um, and for me, once I start to feel comfortable, I try to push myself. Mm -hmm. I want, like, with my posture day stuff, once it starts getting very easy, I try to find something else that I can learn. Right. I mean, last night, I was up till like 4.30. Oh, wow. Just learning, like, I downloaded a new software, Cinema 4D, and I just got immersed in it. <laughs> and I was just I was just trying to learn what I could and try different things because I was just like, I have a master Photoshop, mm -hmm. but my style is already there and I know how to do it easy. I know how to make a poster in like 10 minutes oh, wow. or less. And so it's like Cinema 4D pushed me. Mm -hmm. And so like the poster I made today was like a poster, but it's a video. Mm -hmm. And so the stuff is moving, I made up that Cinema 4D. So oh, it's wow. just that. That whole like pushing and consistency and trying to um, create it as much as you can. Um, and another thing is like don't wait for the job to come. Create the type of job you want to be hired for. That's good. That's a word. That's, that's a whole word. That's like that's like my bottom of life. That's you know? a, no, but that's real. That is so real. <laughs> like you're speaking to me, but that is really real. Um, right. And so so helpful. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, no Tommy, problem. just for coming in and chatting with me and sharing your experiences with others. Thanks for the um, opportunity. No problem. I know it'll be so helpful for a lot of people because even even though I'm not in like the super digital, you know, creative arts and photography life, like it still like transfers over to my experiences as a creative because there are so many things that 
you know, we align with and mesh with when it comes to being a creative. So um, I really pray this video has been helpful for you for you because it's definitely been helpful for me. Um, but yeah, Tammy, great having you here and um, just so thankful. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and subscribe. Yes. I will see you guys next time on Crystal's Corner. Bye. Bye.